wanted to accomplish a number of things for the expo. So far, how's it going? You know what, so far we're really on track on all of our goals and all the things that we wanted to accomplish in 2000 and 2008 for the, for the show. Um, you know, we took everything that we learned from last year, which was our first event, right? and we went ahead and said, let's study, let's study everything that we thought we fell short on, and let's go ahead and let's duplicate everything we thought we did great on, but only go to the next level on everything that we did great on. Right. And so by doing that, we were able to find the little niches, you know, just the little things that make a big difference at a show, right? Creating opportunity for people to sit. We have this giant foyer area outside the trade show floor, right? We say, how can we engage more people in this little area? So, okay, I got an idea. Let's put down couches. Let's put down tables. Let's put down chairs. Let's make it inviting for them to sit in. And let's go ahead and, like, let's give them internet, wireless internet access. Let's give them a bar so that it feels <laughs> like that they're at the bar at the lobby of the hotel. And it's all the little things. So they sit down and they strike up impromptu meetings. And that was something that really sat on me over the year. How are we going to make that happen? Um, you know, let's, let's really have a phenomenal keynote speaker. Last year we had a great keynote speaker. The guy was amazing. But we needed to bring somebody in that, you know, okay, we're a second year show and we got to get past the sophomore jinx, right? And you found Benjamin Sander. <laughs> and we found Benjamin Sander through some help of some friends at URRSCG Edge who had listened and heard him speak twice. And he said, this is the guy you need to get. What did you go away from that whole event thinking about? You know what, for me, everything about that entire event was really about the vision of possibilities. To me, it was like I realized as much as I thought that I was into possibilities and as much as I thought I had an open vision, I sat in that event and realized through the power of music, through the power of his presentation, that you know what, I'm closed-minded. I just didn't realize it until last night. You know, I'm goal fo I'm goal focused, You're right. and, and now I'm gonna try to be less goal focused. You know, exactly. I don't want to spiraling down. I want to walk into a room and be like, you know what? I can go left, right, up, down. It doesn't make a difference because I can make something. But how does that how does that transfer to the magazine industry? It's a good question. Well, you know, ultimately people think we're tied to certain types of content, certain types of readers, we have certain types of revenue streams. So it now makes me have to go back and look at the staff and look at our audience and to look at myself and say, how can we make this better? What can we do as a team to reach more people, to provide more information, to give more than we take, right? And to create new opportunities, whether it's a revenue opportunity, an educational opportunity, and to and to just make more of what we've got by being more open-minded. You know, it's really more about uh, maintaining an open sense of mind and really um, letting loose their inhibitions with some of the current, you know, I guess, constraints that they've kind of been been holding on to yeah, very yeah, tightly. Yeah, because, yeah, 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 you know, yeah. it's not thinking outside of the box. It's really apply. It's really more applying yourself in different means to grow. So. Did it make your job any easier? It did. You know, it was it was kind of a good icebreaker because you know when uh, we did a lot of re-signing today with companies that are exhibiting on the show floor, good. and you know we had bet we had 100% everyone re-sign for their exhibit space for next year, which will be he uh, held at the Hilton right down the street. Oh, okay. That's just being built. The genesis of all of this is the response is Response Magazine. Um, out of Response Magazine, we kind of created the Direct Response Marketing Alliance to create like a, a networking platform um, for the industry. And once we did that, we realized that the best way to get people together on a regular basis was an annual event such as this. Um, so kind of everything's kind of been created a whole cloth out of the magazine originally and then you had the DRMA and the Expo created. And it's all kind of one thing. Uh, networking, education, research, everything's focused on driving the industry forward. So session five, this branding or blending, how did that work? Um, that's my session mm -hmm. and uh, I did it last year. Uh, it's basically a session about how Direct Response TV can also brand your product. Um, and we bring in, our idea is to bring in a brander who is used direct, a traditional brander who's now using Direct Response, uh, try to bring in someone uh, from a brand that's been built out of Direct Response, like a Gutty Rinker or something like that. And then also bring in a, a kind of a wild card speaker. And we had, a, we had a great time yesterday. We had Brian Faze from MTV Networks, which they're a real leader and a visionary in, in DR ad time on cable networks. And, and it was great to have him on board. Um, we had Rich Thompson from Provia Healthcare, another another great guy. He spoke on my panel last year. I mean, he is a wealth of information. And we also had Caroline Robinson from Boost, from Boost Mobile, who was our who was our cover girl in uh, December of 2007. Boost Mobile really hip brand. Some things that she's been doing there are just fantastic, and it's uh, it's great to see her there. 
Uh, session four, maximum integration. Yep. Dick Wexler uh, from Lockhart and Wexler is the moderator on that session. He actually put together a uh, pre-show intensive the day before uh, the event where it was a fully sponsored event. Um, he brought in some great speakers from the pharmaceutical world, from the insurance world, and then we basically asked him to kind of recreate, and that was like a six-hour event, we asked him to recreate the best of that in an hour and 15-minute event for the entire Response Expo uh, group, and it, was, uh, it actually turned out really well. Um, you know, it's very, very rare to hear a pharmaceutical company come in and talk about what they're doing right now. Uh, it's very guarded, very tough to do, and we actually achieved that twice in this expo by having the Bo Ringer Ingelheim guy here, uh, Whit Rawlinson, really smart man, and also having the Cialis case study today. So we're uh, very excited about that. I don't know if there's been a direct response trade show that has had even one pharmaceutical session before, and we had uh, two different pharmaceutical companies represented here.